everybody to another live cast here on the game wisdom channel i am josh placer and we have another great discussion for you tonight where you got a returning guest and fan on he is the an independent developer and we're going to be discussing some of the challenges and considerations about what it means to present your game at a convention and this is a topic that we haven't discussed too much about in the past but please welcome back to the cast michael taylor hey 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 Mike, how are you doing? It is actually snowing here where I'm at. How is everything where you're at? Um, um, to, to, put, to put it diplomatically, it's uh, it's inconsistently cold. <laughs> um, the, we we got sleet sleet like a couple days ago, but not full on snow like you're having. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's going in and out around here. It's going to be one of those very weird winters. I can feel it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, for people tuning in, whether it's live or recorded, um, could you talk a little bit about, who, uh, just give a brief recap about who you are and what is the last game that you've worked on? Um, no problem. Um, I'm the uh, independent and one-man studio of big niche games, and I I put out. I uh, put out Negative World back in August. It was a 2D puzzle platformer where jumps are limited. And just just recently, it's been approved to be uh, ported to Xbox One. So that's exciting. Nice. That actually is, interestingly, that gives me like a brief of a tangent I want to ask you about, Mike. Uh, what was it like, like that process of getting the game ported to Xbox? Like, what kind of things did you have to do for that? Well, well, well. Here, let me be clear. It's been approved to be ported. Oh. I haven't, I haven't full on ported it oh. yet. <laughs> that is a, a nightmare in of itself. I would assume. Uh, it's all. All I could say is patience. It's nothing but patience. Mm -hmm. I guess for any developers watching this, since we're only kind of talking about things from the indie dev point of view for today. Did you like have to get in touch with Microsoft in order to like start the process? Um, well, all 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 I did was just uh, sub su submit it via the Microsoft website. Wait, wait a few weeks, and then they either said yes or no. I've tried, and, and it was the se second try that that eventually won them over. I don't know what be because because last time they asked for for a build but uh well when, when i tried it the first time i was two weeks away from the pc release and i was kind of nervous about that and then i tried months later and they and they didn't ask for a build for build this time i don't know what the microsoft standards are honestly <laughs> i think that nobody knows what the standards are most, most of these stores are these days <laughs> Well, 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 well. In in the case of Nintendo, if you if you try to ask them why why they wouldn't let you in, they they don't tell you jack. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I know. They don't tell you anything in Nintendo. Like they'll just say no, and then that's it. <laughs> or or something the lines of saying something along the lines of saying that we we can't let you on X service at this time. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. But. It's good to hear that at least, at least things are moving forward with Negative World. Have you started work on any other projects at the moment? I'm actually been prototyping the second project, and uh, it it's almost at it's almost at the point where I could start making weekly devlogs about it. If, um, the, and by that I mean I got the gameplay feedback loop locked down, but but I want to may make sure it's not. Totally unpresentable, you know. Mm -hmm. e even though, even though it is starting in early, like right, right now, I'm just still, I'm still, I'm still prototype with cubes at the moment. All right. Well, uh, uh, definitely good luck with the next prototype, Michael. And yeah, it's definitely been a crazy time around here. I've been working on my second book, which is actually going to be focusing exclusively on the platformer genre. So, uh, fingers crossed, things go well there. I'm still waiting to hear back about how the first book did. Nice. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's going to be a very busy uh, winter wonderland, I guess, for me. I guess for you, too, as well, this coming month and so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've just uh, f lear 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 learning new things have in the same way one drinks from a fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Uh, for our topics for today, we're going to be kind of discussing what it's like to be an independent developer going to these conventions. And for anybody watching this, either live or recorded, if you have any questions for us, please let us know either in the chat or in the comments in the recorded version. And if you missed our previous cast, I'll include a link to that as well down below. So, to get things going with, Michael, when it comes to, I guess, going to conventions, I guess, how many have you gone to in, like, the last few years? Um, in the last few years, I've, I've, uh, exhibited in just about, I don't know, three or four different PAXs, uh, whether it be it exhibiting with other companies or, or in this case with, pa in the last PAX South, my first time exhibiting my own company and my own game, but, uh, I've, all, I've had some practice with local events, uh, to to kind of get the you know the salesperson spiel down and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly a lot we can I guess springboard or spring into from this point. I guess the first question I'm sure people are wondering is, I guess how do you look up conventions? I mean I I think I know the answer because I've done it myself. But for any developers watching this. What's like your general process for kind of reaching out or finding places to present to? Uh, well, well, the big the big conventions obviously aren't hard to find. Mm -hmm. Um, like like if 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 uh, if 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 uh, general players are 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 the de are, are the demographic you want to cater to uh, the packs and games comp will fulfill that just fine if you want to meet publishers or possible investors stuff stuff like e3 and gdc are the places to go um but but for smaller stuff um I've uh, of, of course I look at the regular pages and and I and I just try to find well, well what the general audience is for that like like for example Rooster Teeth uh, the Rooster Teeth Expo if, if they they are they are less of a they are less of a, a gaming audience though, though 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 gaming is a is a good chunk of their audience but but but, but they're more um, anime or animation fans. Mm -hmm. And when you're looking at like the conventions, is is there anything that like sticks out to you, or you need to keep track of, like when you're looking at a convention in terms of whether or not this will be a good fit for you or for your game? Well, well, like I said, it go it goes back to uh, to to what the convention's audience is. Um, in my experience, uh, Pax Pax is always the biggest soapbox. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't say with game Gamescom. I've seen footage, and I've been told by other developers is a good place, but I've never been to Gamescom, so I I can't re can't really say much on it. Okay. Now, when you're getting in touch with these conventions, I know like for myself around here, there's usually like a generic contact form stuff like that to fill out. When you were uh, getting set up to be presented at like the various PAXs. I guess what did you have to like do, or like what hoops you had to jump through to get your name in there? Um, so 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 uh, for for those who don't know, I was in the Pax Rising booth. Kind 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 of think of it as as the as the indie mega booth, but for mid to lower tier indies, like say say it, the 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 indie mega mega booth would would host your uh, your team meets or or your super giant games and stuff like that um i i was told by a friend of mine that that they had this thing called the rising booth and uh and i i tried to submit to their website but but they didn't have anything and so i i had to uh go through pack support to find the right email to get there <laughs> and and I sent them the info, the press kit, and stuff like that. And and this was in November, by the way. Um, the end of afterwards. Afterwards, uh, of a month or so, because you know Thanksgiving was happening <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, I asked, "Hey, how's it going? How's the selection going?" And it turns out I was too late to get in the packs, pack South Rising. But 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 
but but the uh, guy li- 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 like the concept of my game that I'm in for the uh, PAX East booth and, and then I bugged him again about it because he said to get back to him on the first week of the new year and and then I heard uh, he and, th- and then I heard that someone bailed out at the last moment mm-hmm. and PAX South and just offered the spot to me which I which I took and then I had to scramble to get all the marketing marketing materials the pins the banners the the flyers so the, all all of that so it, it was it, it it was a hectic two weeks <laughs> and I definitely want to talk about game prepare for the convention I think that will probably be our next subject in a few minutes but uh, sticking with kind of contacting these conventions and this is another thing I've kind of experienced with contacting people about my book and about my presentations, but is it considered good form, I guess, to get in as early as possible? Like, if you're even, you know, remotely thinking about going to a convention or presenting there, should you just contact them, like, the second you consider that? Probably yes. Um, because, because in the case of Plaque, in the ah, plaques, uh, in the case of PAX, they're they're just flooded with game submissions and booth submissions. Especially not so much PAX South, but more so PAX West and the mm-hmm. big one, PAX yeah. East. All right, and I guess another point. I know this is something I think even for myself and for a lot of new developers, they tend to struggle with, and that's the idea of keep emailing people. You know, keep trying to keep that line of communication open. I guess for you, Michael, did you have to, like, email them, like, a lot? Like, what do you consider, I guess, good, I don't know, like, etiquette when it comes to trying to keep in touch with, like, conventions and people you're trying to reach out to along those lines? Um, generally, but, but, but it, it honestly depends on, on the context, like, if, like you know, if I'm just cold emailing them and I don't hear back in a week or so, that that's when I try again. Yeah. But 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 uh, you you know they say, oh oh get back to me at this certain week or I'll get back to you at this certain day and they don't. Yeah, go go ahead and contact them. Mm-hmm. It yeah. it it honestly just depends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely the same way about that. Like if I don't hear from somebody, I send an email. I don't get back in like five to seven days. I'll send them another one. And usually for myself, I've gotten a lot more aggressive about that like in terms of like keeping that line of communication open. Basically, I tell people that unless somebody says no, I'm not going to stop emailing you. And I know that may sound very aggressive, very annoying, but then you have to remember that if you're trying to get something going or get something done, you know, you can't just wait for someone to get back to you in like six weeks to a year or a few months from now. Right. Yep, exactly, Ogoro. Keep pestering them. And it's one of those things, I think, for a lot of developers. I'm going to ask this of you, Michael, as well, since you're still uh, you're starting out. You're still like in like the early stage of being an independent developer. Like, Was it hard for you to, I guess, do cold emails to people? At first, like when, when I was just starting, uh, at least semi-starting professionally back in like 2016, 2015. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, like, oh, yeah. it's... And like like it's it's no secret that that the majority of of game game developers not just indie developers that start out as uh, introverted nothing kids oh, yes. mm-hmm. <laughs> so 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 uh ev so uh, so uh, you know uh, it, it, it's it's just a hump to, to get across for for uh for for almost anybody mm-hmm Yep, and I was suddenly the same way with Game Wisdom back when I first started. Today, I'm like, I don't give a crap, you know. I'm going to email you, and if you don't respond, I'm just going to keep bugging you. Because I don't care. Like, that's that's pretty much how I got over my bit of, I guess, introversion or stage fright. I just don't care. I'm just going to do it regardless. Well, well it, it, it's also easier to th- think of it as... Um, as what's the worst that could happen, yeah. and 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 usually it's just either no or just no response. Yeah, and like I said, I don't take no response for an answer anymore. I have to, I will keep bugging you until you just say the word no, and then I'm like, okay, move on to the next. Alrighty, <laughs> but uh, when it comes to the conventions themselves, I guess. Um, I know, like, for myself, when I'm reaching out to people, I have to do a general pitch, you know, who I am, what I do, that kind of thing. 
when you're getting in touch with the various conventions, I guess what kind of what do you say in terms of like of a pitch or things that you do? Uh, the, the, this is actually where a lot of the local shows come into play because if you start at small shows, you'll you you will learn what pitches work and what mm -hmm. don't. And ah, uh, God, this pitch is just hammered into my head you, you know by I say but, you know hey I'm a developer I do this and that and here's my game of the, the 2d 2d puzzle platformer where jumps are limited and 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 uh, the go into more detail link link the trailer the press kits of all of that I try to make it you know short and concise and and to the point and more importantly e easy to link and find mm -hmm. yeah and I guess in terms of like the links, like what do you give to people as kind of like your quote unquote portfolio when you're reaching out to them? What exactly do you mean? Like what links like do you show them like of your work, like you know, Twitter, a website, like what do you give as references like when you email people about you know who you are and um, what you do? Um, aside from like the press kit and the trailer, I told I said. Um, my my general company email signature. It links to the company website, the company Twitter, and uh, and the uh, YouTube channel where where I made the uh, exhibiting post more on my link to you a few mm -hmm. weeks ago. Mm -hmm. if, yeah. And it also hosts all my uh, game dev logs of Negative World Two. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I have the same thing in my email signature as well. The website, my Twitter, the book, you know. Anything that I can show people that I have, you know, some kind of credence online for, I'm going to put in that signature so that they know that I'm not just some random person saying, you know, give me money and I'll do maybe something for you in a few weeks. Right. Now, I, I guess getting back to kind of these presentations or getting back to the conferences, I'm sorry, uh, when you're reaching out, I guess... You, you, of course, mentioned looking at places locally, of course, the various PAX conferences. I guess, for any developers watching this right now, are there any centralized sources in terms of conventions or, like, broken down by, like, state or region that they can look at or, like, any kind of information along those lines? Um, in my experience, no, and, and if there is, I would like to see it. Mm -hmm. Um, like... Well, mostly what I've had to go on was uh, was a, a GDC talk hosted by those awesome guys, the the developers of Move or Die, and they made a fantastic graph uh, of uh, of the uh, audience crossover between conventions and stuff like that. The the the, the, the talk itself was called was called you you quote you suck at showcasing your game, <laughs> and and uh, and that's where I get the uh, Packs and games com analogy where where it's best for gen general customers and e threes for investors and there are other name name no name con conventions that, that that are more for uh, other more business guys who are more more attracted to buzzwords but anyway that's beside the point yeah and it is very important to know again as you were saying a few minutes ago what is the audience of these conferences? Because I get emails about places around here all the time, and it's like, oh, this is a business networking place. That doesn't really help me if I'm trying to showcase a presentation or why I do about video games. And it is important to, again, know what you're getting yourself into. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to, I guess, getting to these presentations, I guess here's one thing I think a lot of developers want to know about or probably have thought about themselves and that is like transportation in terms of I guess getting around like do you have any advice or tips when it comes to the fact that you are going to commute to several of these places um well if, if that's like kind of a cheating question but because pack south is was in San Antonio and I'm currently in the state of Texas so <laughs> that, that wasn't that, that 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 wasn't much of a problem for me but I but I've been to uh pax west in uh Seattle mm -hmm. and well one and honestly one it 
it, it helps if, if if someone's coming with you to help. It helps sp split the Airbnb bill and and some of the Lyft bills. Um, the, but in my in my experience, um, either find a really cheap hotel and and uh, and to, and take the and and. Pa 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 pack up everything when 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 you leave, even though it's not checkout date, just in case. <laughs> um, or uh, uh, and ah, excuse me. Um, and just and just honestly, honestly, save up as much as you can, and and mm -hmm. just five and just find things in your price range. If, if the, th the thankfully for Paxes in Seattle, Boston, and and I think San Antonio too. Yeah, I know for a fact it's San Antonio. Uber and Lyft are everywhere. Oh yeah, Uber has only been a godsend for me around here in terms of doing presentations and getting to a various places around here. I'm sure it's helped out a lot of other developers as well. Yeah. Hey, hey, Mojo. Hey, Mike. It's been a while. <laughs> now. I think one thing a lot of developers are probably thinking about when we talk about these presentations or going to these conferences is definitely like those expenses. And I think this is, again, one of those things that a lot of consumers don't really think about when it comes to, you know, going to an E3 or going to a PAX or GDC or whatever. And, oh yeah, it is Mojo, it is uh, Michael from Neg who did Negative World. But... When it comes to these conferences, it is very expensive, especially, again, the further you have to travel. When I went out to GDC, I think this was 2012, I think the bill came to at least $1,000, maybe more. And that wasn't even, you know, if I had to get a the pass. Thankfully, I got a press pass access, which basically got me to all the shows. But that certainly doesn't cover food and board and travel. Right. Now... I guess here's a quick question. I, I think I know the answer to this one. When you do get accepted into a show, be, be it PAX or whatever, they will usually provide you with a pass or access for free. Is that right? They've, they've, in my experience, they've, they, they will provide two exhibitor passes for free. I didn't bring anyone else with me. I was just solo. Um, uh, but, uh, but, uh, the, uh, Booth, booth, you still have to pay for. Okay. What is like? Is there a general average for the booth costs? Uh, the cheapest, which I think was a a ten by ten, mm -hmm. um, is still a grand or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, I'm a. I think we can all assume then that bigger the booth will obviously mean more you know awareness but i'm i'm going to guess that cost is going to escalate very quickly oh yeah and and you know it it, it, it honestly depends what, what your business plan is like for for me being a little old small indie company still 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 trying to you know mm -hmm. no no like get the word out that hey i exist um I I was fine with a small booth, and plus I was looking at ways how to how to like design a booth, make it eye catching, and and help make the crowd the work work to your advantage and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you mentioned that, Michael, because I want to touch on that one in the coming minutes when it comes to kind of getting yourself prepared for actually going out there. Because again, for a lot of developers, I'm sure for people watching us right now, they may have gone out there and never really prepared, or they may be thinking about going to their first convention in the future. And again, a lot of the stuff, I'm sure like for yourself, you kind of had to figure it out as you went along. Like There wasn't exactly like a checklist out there for you to look at. No, no, not at all. Mm -hmm. So... Um, for Again, for people who are tuning in late for the live stream, if you have any questions for Michael regarding going to conventions, setting up, preparing, anything like that, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments and we'll get to them. But uh, let's kind of move on to our next subject then. So we've talked about contacting, or actually before we do that, anything else regarding actually just getting in touch with conventions that we didn't touch on, Michael? Um... Uh, don't 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 be afraid to ask for uh, ask for, 
actually don't be afraid to ask really technical nit nitpicky questions mm -hmm. to, to them like uh general boot size or or if the boot's gonna have panted carpet <laughs> if you're gonna be standing for eight hours a day um will there be chairs and, available you know? uh, the what, what what exactly is allowed uh, mm -hmm. on the booth and the, the and stuff like that like like, like very nitpicky stuff uh, the uh, don't be afraid to ask that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think like I think that is very important. I think one, it kind of shows that you're thinking ahead, and two, it kind of covers your own butt because you don't want to come out there and be completely, you know, out, you know, inappropriate for the convention. Right. Mm -hmm. So with that said, let's move on to kind of our next part of this topic, and that is actually preparing for the convention. So you've contacted the place, you know, you've done email tag for however long, you've paid your fee, and you're now ready to actually start thinking about going out there. So the question now turns to, what do you do? So I guess for you, Michael, what did you do? Like, you got the email saying you've been accepted, you're ready to go, so what's the next step? Well, like I said earlier, earlier um, I got into the Rising booth a week before the convention, so mm -hmm. I had to scramble to get everything. Um, like, the, the, like you know, I got the banners, I got the flyers, I got the pins. I had to print new. I had to print company business cards. I had to restock my freelance business cards, mm -hmm. um, and and just had to uh, get make make a con. Well, what I thought was just going to be a convention exclusive feature in into the game but but uh thanks to positive feedback i need to implement that for real now <laughs> but the the but, but but the point is i didn't i didn't leave anything anything off the table i i i wanted to be prepared and plus and plus being that this was my for first convention where i was exhibiting my own product my own uh company because you, you know in the past I've exhibited with other companies mm -hmm. before on their own products and stuff like that uh, the, 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 this was just kind of a small scale experiment for me okay now when you said that you were getting you know, pins together cards banners things like that I'm assuming that wasn't stuff you just had lying around you actually had to order it from a company right yeah, no, yeah. I haven't oh, you had like your own uh, parade ensemble in your apartment or wherever you live no, of course not, man. <laughs> I don't have. I've. I don't. I. I. I don't have free for freaking uh, negro pins on reserve. Mm -hmm. So I guess for developers, I again, this is another question. I think I know the answer to. Uh, who did you use in terms of getting that stuff printed out? Uh, for for the. Uh... For the uh, banner, I use TRT banners. Um, for, for for the pins, I use Sticker Mule. Um, one thing I didn't mention was a cardboard. Um, well, like I I ordered like a cardboard uh, cutout with the uh, with the uh, um, game game title and info that, that 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 I could Velcro on top of the TV for certain shows and okay. stuff like that. But I ended up not needing that and honestly I can't remember the place I got it from. Sorry. Okay. Um and for um flyer flyers I got from well both flyers and cards I got from Vista Print. Yeah. And I use Vista for the business cards I get printed up too. Now you said that you heard back from the convention like it was like a week before it was actually started. I'm surprised like they were able to get everything out to you within that time, or did you have it kind of shipped to the convention? Well, like I said before, um, I only got the rising or the the the, the Pax rising uh for the position because because one of the companies ducked out at the last moment. Mm -hmm. And there was just an extra space. Okay. So, um, did you have to bring all the materials with you to the convention? Oh yeah, no, no. I ship, I ship, I sh I shipped them to my home and just packed up and went to San Antonio. <laughs> all right. Now, I guess in terms of knowing what to order. Again, there is no set checklist for it, but again, I think this goes back to what we were saying earlier with regards to asking those questions, like to know what it is you can and can't exhibit at the show. 
Um, and and you're talking and you're just talking about uh, talking about the uh, marketing materials. Yeah, like the marketing materials, what the booth will be, things like that. Well, okay. In my in my experience, because I was in a very specified booth that that that's you know under PAX official and stuff like that, I ended up not using the uh, banner, even though I'm definitely using it for future shows. Um, and and they already provided uh like uh ban the um uh, car car work cut out so I didn't have to use use the one I ordered. Um, but uh, but uh, other than other than all of that, um, I I basically had I I I didn't have any qualms with uh my own pins or cards or flyers. Like I didn't get any complaints about that. Now, one thing that we didn't mention yet that I think is very important is the actual game itself that you're exhibiting. Do they provide, like, any kind of, like, of a station or a setup for your game, or do you have to bring everything out yourself? Um, in the case of PAX Rising, uh, the, the uh, table was already there, thankfully. Um, uh, the, but... Uh, otherwise, you you know the game, the computer, the lab, the the uh, monitor, uh, all the wiring, uh, and even even a couple of extension cords. That's all on you. Okay. Yeah, that's why I kind of figure in terms of, like I'm sure they don't want to be liable for any kind of technical issues or things like that. They basically want uh, the uh, presenter themselves to set all that up. Yep. So. When it, I guess another quick question then. I'm assuming they tell you then like how many stations you're allowed to have up. Like, is that like one of the things they will let you know about? Um, no, actually, okay. but uh, but um, if, but from 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 in that booth, I could have fit two computers on there, like two laptops or two two towers. If, but one, I don't have two monitors any and and. Again, I only have one computer, the one portable computer at that. Okay. So, then again, I'm assuming that when they gave you, like, the space, me uh, space measurements, you know, 10 by 10, whatever, that you're kind of given, I guess, somewhat carte blanche to do what you want within there. Obviously not, you know, breaking their own terms of service. Right. Okay. So... I guess when it comes to setting up, I guess here's another quickie of a question. When you do, obviously, presenting ad conventions is everything going. I'm assuming then, do you have to get there like a day or so early? Or like, when do they usually will allow you to get in there and start preparing your booth? Um, I usually come in the the day before the first convention when, you know, everyone says to setting up, even the big companies. Mm -hmm. And... And, and and you know, with uh, aside uh, other than the uh, exhibitor mixer, it's the uh, it's the uh, it, it's probably the best time to um, network with uh, of other developers who are also setting up. Mm -hmm. uh, be, be, because well, the, well, when the convention starts, uh, each day is is you, you, you know a nine to five stand the yeah. salesperson stand stand up, and and, and you know by the by the uh, by. And by the end, you you don't want to talk with anybody. You just want to go back to your motel and just try to sleep it off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just and just prepare for the next day. Mm-hmm. Imagine I got two bottles of water in preparation for this gas. <laughs> so uh, oh yeah, well, um, side side tangent. Bring your own water supply. <laughs> When 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 uh when when showing off at conventions, you are going to be talking with people, and and the voice stamina isn't infinite, and also mm -hmm. and also and also there's the Pax flu. Mm hmm. And and may bring some hand sanitizer too. That may help too. <laughs> oh yeah, that too. Like the the, the the like it's uh, the, the, the conventions also uh, is is also a few a few levels away to being a freaking quarantine zone. Just yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, it can't hurt to be too 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 uh, too pre too prepared in terms of cl cleanliness. Yeah. And as in my own personal side tangent, make sure to, of course, take a shower every day at least, folks. Like, I, there are some people there who don't do that, and yeah, like, GDC was starting to 
be kind of a smelly place when I went there, like, the last few days. <laughs> so, um, I guess getting back to actually setting up then, any other interesting aspects or tips with regards to preparing the booth that you want to talk about? Um, th this is less on the uh, booth side and more on the game side. Um, and I talk about this in my uh, exhibiting postmortem video. Um, some some game, not all games are treated equal on the show floor. And what what I mean by that is that uh, uh, story driven games or strategy games are 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 kind of. Uh, have their own issues on a show floor like the the, uh, the story driven games uh, so suffer from exposition and dialogue in the first few minutes mm -hmm. and and strategy games are are kind of intimidating with uh, the mouse and keyboard and the uh, UI and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh, especially since people are going to be wa watching you play like some 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 players are pressured mm -hmm. and it it helps to have a game that that uh, puts people right in the uh, right right into the game with uh, with 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 barely exp with barely any explanation, but is also simple enough to grasp. Mm -hmm. um, like and, and even if the even if the game is story driven, all said and done, try try to make it try to make the convention demo the more selling on the gameplay side. Mm -hmm. It'd be because because when, when when you're talking to people who are playing the game or watching the game, you you you, you can just tell them that you know it's going to be story driven and in it's it's a story driven game, but but for the purposes of convention purposes of, of the convention, we we needed to you know axe that part of it and go go right into the gameplay. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you mentioned a convention demo there, Michael, because that takes me to kind of my next set of questions for you, and that is getting the game itself ready for the convention. As you said already, that not every game is, I guess, quote-unquote, uh, con convention popular, or something that will look well at a convention setting. And I think that's another very interesting topic, and another a little hurl to always have to think about. I think it's very similar to what we look at on a game with early access. Because again, as you said, like story-driven games, like something that takes 10 to 15 hours to play or to get into, isn't exactly something you want to be showing at a convention. Or, I guess here's a question for you then, Michael. Is there such a thing, like, as, like, can any game be considered good for a convention? Or is it just a matter of tweaking that demo or that presentation for it? Um, um, well, within reason, um, like, like I, I, I genuinely think that that if 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 you have a good mechanic or at least a good gimmick, and 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 you could tweak that into a more uh, gameplay focused demo, I think I think it could work, but but. But when out of reason, I don't think uh, PAX will just uh, allow out outright outright porn in on the <laughs> booth. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, but 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 you did say can any game, but that's mm -hmm. why I say within reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, again, these are things you have <laughs> to keep track of. Again, as we said, with going back to early access or any place where you're able to exhibit your game. Certain games are obviously stronger to put in front of someone as opposed to having them be the one to kind of, I guess, instigate the conversation like that. And with, I guess, again, getting your game to be convention ready. As you said a few minutes ago that, I guess, with Negative World, did you prepare, like, a separate build exclusively for the conventions? Um, yes, yes, actually, of, the, of, of course, I kind of, again, I kind of have an unfair advantage because, you know, the game was already released, mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it was already polished and I didn't have to spend endless nights fixing bugs or whatever, but, but I did make a convention exclusive build where, um, going back to that GDC talk, uh, the Move or Die devs talked about how they got audiences involved with the, uh, with the uh, game, of be be it uh, a tur a tournament prizes or or having people like dr draw their own uh, p characters, so some of which eventually made it into the game mm -hmm. and stuff and stuff like that. And so I wanted to run with that idea, and 
with what I had with Negative World, I thought, you know, timing speed running tournaments would be would be fine enough. And then of course I needed to get the prizes, which <laughs> is another which which is another thing you have to consider in your yep. convention budget. Like like the da- download code, the like just download codes are not gonna cut it for prizes. Yeah. Um and and God, if 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 you add cog like a decent enough competition in a decent enough game with decent enough prizes, you would be surprised how how much how much return engagement you get. Mm-hmm. But as you just said, you also have to fire that into your costs because again, it's not cheap to go to a any kind of conference or presentation, let alone if you're the one who's exhibiting it as well. Yeah. So. Um, with the game back to like the demo or the game itself, and I think this is a very interesting point with regards to, as you said, with Negative World, it was already done. So uh, to keep with that line of thought for a second, how did you decide what to show people of Negative World from your full build? Well, well, another another important factor is that how long how long do you want the demo to be? Mm-hmm. So, so, and I try to provide my demos with with a uh, with a well, well, with a clear cut beginning, middle, and end, and so I just I put in I just put in uh, world one only, and and all and also and and because I was doing a speed running tournament, I wanted it to be you know short, mm-hmm. uh, and. Uh, yeah, all I can say is that if, make make a decently paced demo mm-hmm. where and where where up uh, you know it's fast enough that pe- people can just stop stop and switch and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And even just that phrase, you know, making a, a decent demo, that is definitely a podcast topic right there. <laughs> we could talk about mm-hmm. at some point, right? So. Uh, with Negative Worlds, you said you kept it to being World 1. So, I guess, how long, on average, was that as for someone to generally play through? Um, the, 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 the average onlooker not going into the speedrunning tournament, it usually took them um, 5 to 7 minutes. Okay. Like, 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 it, like a, a perfectly fine demo convention playtime. Mm-hmm. And that was what I was about to uh, discuss there, like, length is obviously very important when it comes to these demos. As you said, when you present Negative World, you only had the one computer set up for it. And mm-hmm. you have to be, realize, again, that you have, you know, hundreds if not thousands of people walking around the convention. And, you mm-hmm. know, if you make your demo be 30 minutes long, that's going to be great for one person, but then you're missing out on everybody else who's coming around. Yeah. So, uh, I guess, I'm not sure if you had a chance to think about this yourself, Michael, but I'm sure any developer who's watching this is probably thinking this. What if I don't have a full game? What if I am still in either, like, a beta or alpha, or even just a pro-type stage? Like, how would I best show off my game at that point? For that, um, I've heard many different methods from other indie devs. Um, some, some, some of it ranging from, 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 from the uh, novel to the, uh, to the, uh, to the pestering. Um, like I've heard stories where, uh, where maybe because they wanted prototype feedback, they they didn't bother with a booth and they just mm. like and 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 they and they just go around uh, with their laptop or oh, whatever. Geez. Uh, the le- uh, the v- and and try and try to find games that that'd be close to their general audience and wave and and you know show it to people in line and, like if they're in a long line or whatever and just have them play it yeah no no not my thing yeah. um and uh, and the more novel approach where uh one where one team could couldn't afford a booth well but had a decent enough prototype to at least you, you know get some general feedback on the one of them actually cosplayed as like an arcade cabinet and he was like <laughs> and and he was actually holding the computer in in there and stuff like that and and and, and so it 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 was uh it was kind of 
it 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 was like the best story of 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 indie ger ger er, ah, er, 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 guerrilla mar marketing in a convention space. Mm -hmm. Or that's going to be the uh, cyberpunk future of hot wiring people with game device and just having them like walk around <laughs> being their own personal booth. Yeah, but uh, the but uh, the but long and short answer is that that um. It, if you don't have a game, I uh, there there is always so much you could you you could so much of a response you could get by just telling people about oh this game is this mm -hmm. and and that and all that. Yeah, and yeah, it's very important again to know exactly how you want to pitch your game. I guess when you were at PAX, I'm curious, were there any like uh, I guess VR or AR games like that they, they don't need a booth. That you can just like show off, like maybe like just like a small section of the convention. Oh uh, well, there there were definitely VR games there, but but I mean, in in terms of, though though I haven't seen much uh, much of Gear the Gear VR or anything like that. It, it it's you it's usually the Oculuses and the Vives that are shown who who need that. That constrained room space that's a function. So no, I didn't see much. You, you know, gear VRs on the show floor. Okay. Now with the demo or the build itself, I definitely want to talk about feedback. That'll probably be our next topic in a few minutes. But like, I guess wrapping up like the demo itself. Do you give like anything out to the person? Like, do you have? Obviously, you say you brought pins and cards and stuff like that. But are there any other things like a developer can like kind of give to the consumer when the game is over, kind of to make sure that they remember like this game in the future? Um, yeah, I've tried. To, I've tried some other things. Like one thing I learned quickly: flyers don't work. <laughs> at all, like like I I mean I ran out of flyers and stuff like that, but but the considering uh I put in a sticker to my own Discord server and stuff like that, and to this day just only two out of the hundred flyers worked, mm -hmm. so like they just don't work. But um uh, like the uh, pin pins, uh, pin pins are are usually. Especially in packs, the number one uh, thing pe 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 people use to 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 uh, remember your, your your game, especially since uh, Penny Arcade exists uh, the for for pin collectors. Mm -hmm. I guess um, with you know hindsight and all that, if was there any like marketing materials or promos that you if you had the chance. You would go back and prepare for when you were setting up at PAX. So, but so, so, so basically, what, what, what could I have done better? Yeah. Well, we'll chuck all the flyers, <laughs> um, and 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 probably get like a tablet used to uh, sign up for uh, for a. Uh, for the uh, emailed new 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 newsletters because I learned very quickly nobody wants to uh, grab grab a pen and write write down their email addresses and stuff like that on a piece of paper after they're done playing after they've picked up flyers or pins or whatever and and for what I've been told from other developers uh, uh, tablets are much are much better for 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 that so the, and also it's more legible. Mm -hmm. And actually, as a quick tangent on that, like with regards to getting people to like sign up or give your information, do you use like is there like specific software for like quickly managing and organizing like emails and stuff like that that you would use? Um, I I have not personally tried it, but I've been told that like Square, um, of the the company, a lot of a uh, mm -hmm. of, of a lot of uh, exhibitors use for for for, for like a, 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 a card swiping yeah. payments and stuff like that. Uh, have something like that, but uh, the but up to this point, I've only ever used like uh, Google Sheets or Excel and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like when they give you like their information, like 
how do you like take it down like that? Do you just like get like a card or an email and then type it in yourself, or would they like type into like a doc or some other secondary program? Um, pro probably just type type it in. Mm -hmm. All right. I guess with regards to the demo build or anything or building the game itself for the convention, any other aspects of that that you want to discuss? Um. This is also something I cover in the video. Um, try, try to make the uh, the pacing and speed consistent, cause um, because there are a couple levels that I made. Oh, okay, fine. Okay, fine, Mojo. I'll keep it short. Uh, ba uh, ba basically, I ba basically I had two. Basically, 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 I had two levels where, where it was just them pushing a block, and it's the most boring levels. But I needed. I put in those to, uh, uh to break bra bra break away from from the Manani and also uh, have the players learn new things. But but more often than not, but the people saw that that part of the demo and just turned away and just like psh, no interest. All right, so, I think uh, time about so, so 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 basically just keep keep the pace consistent. Okay, and keeping with that line about people playing your game, and getting that feedback, that's going to be our next major topic. But uh, one other question. Oh, hey, Mike, or other Mike, thanks for coming on. Uh, one other question, regards to the convention demo. If you're presenting at multiple conventions. Do you typically, I guess, keep the same demo for each one, or would you make slight tweaks or alterations? You know, whether you're going to PAX East, PAX West, PAX South, etc. For, 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 for the most part, I use the say, same demo. Of course, I patch in some bugs I saw or whatever, but otherwise it's just the same demo. Alright. And I guess this should... This will also probably be our way of segueing to talking about feedback and talking to the consumers. But when it comes to, I guess, making sure that the game is playable, like obviously, as you just said, like you squash any bugs before it gets out there. And I think I just want to elaborate on that for any developers watching that if you know your game has certain bugs or certain issues with within that demo, within that content, you would probably try to get rid of as many of those as possible before you actually go presenting, right? Yeah, and and if and if you can't get rid of all of them, just at the very least, get get rid of the showstoppers and the crashers. Yeah, if you don't want your game to be crashing at a convention, that, that doesn't always that never goes well for the convention itself. Yeah, go have, ask Phil Fish in that one bit in indie game the movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, but as a quick time check, we are approaching an hour in. So, I do want to talk about play testing and the actual feedback next, and that will probably take up the remaining point of our cast. But for any developers watching, or I'm sorry, for anyone watching this live right now, this will probably be like our, I guess, not last warning, but maybe second to last warning for questions for Michael. But let me see what's going on here. <laughs> there you go. But. We've talked about getting to the convention, we've talked about setting up, and we've talked about getting the game going. But now it's time to talk about, I think, the real challenge, and that is uh, meeting and dealing with the actual convention goers themselves. Because this can certainly be a nightmare for many new developers. Like we said earlier in this cast, most people who get into the game industry, especially from the independent side, aren't exactly the most extroverted of people. And it does take proper training and preparation to get yourself ready to talk to people who you will probably, you've never met before and you may never meet again. So, I guess for you, Michael, going to uh, your first convention and being an exhibitor, what was it like, I guess, talking to people for the first time like that? Well, like I said before, I've had I've had lots of preparation and experience. Like I I went to local shows, I exhibited with other companies. So, I I've kind of I've had the spiel down and and I've had enough practice. So, again, I just kind of have to give an unfair answer here. Okay. I guess then with that said then, what tips or like what have you kind of prepared for yourself 
when it comes to being at a booth or being at your own booth? What 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 do you mean? I guess like uh, how did you like prepare like your marketing talk or like what did you pick up like doing at, or working at local conventions that kind of help you when you're actually exhibiting you know, on your own like at a major place? Well, well, all those small events help help perfect the salesman pitch. Like they wrote a two D puzzle platformer where jumps are limited mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um. And, and and you know it's also good, also good to study study facial expressions with and how they're playing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. All right, now <laughs> and now when it comes to the actual uh, getting the game and having people play, I guess this is a very important distinction that there is a difference between exhibiting a game that's already out as you did with Negative World. Versus exhibiting a game that's either a prototype or something that you're trying to get feedback on, and oh yeah, oh yeah, I just want to get your thoughts on that one because again, that can be a make it or break it point for first time developers. Oh yeah, um, f- for oh, for for games that are in development or in prototype, it's a it's a it's a fine line to walk across because. Because even if the feedback's positive, um, something something in development could uh, could result in uh, scrapping if scrapping something that that was positively re- received and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh well, Mojo. Um, in 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 answer to your question, uh, the game. The game, the second game I'm working on is in prototype phase, but I'm still prototyping with uh, cubes and 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 bland uh, U- 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 Unity terrain. I'm I'm hoping to get dev logs out within within uh, late next month and, and start and start uh, uh, ta- ta- uh, give 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 giving updates on 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 the development of the game weekly and stuff like that. Okay, but. But yeah, mm-hmm. and we've been doing more like indie game spotlight streams here on the channel as well, where I'll play games at the prototype or you know alpha or beta stage, you know, to try to get more awareness out for developers. <laughs> he wants all the details. Well, so, sorry, I can't <laughs> spill them all yet, but but I I guess I could spill the genre the genre at least. Um, uh, all I can say is that the biggest influence is Star Fox. Okay, hopefully that will uh, whet your appetite there, Mojo. <laughs> but uh, getting back to presenting the game again about that difference between a game that's a work in progress and a game that is already out. I think this is a very important point again about accepting criticism and feedback. We were just do, uh, having this discussion about this on our recent live show uh, that we did on Sunday, and that it's very important, I think, to kind of, I guess, prepare your own uh, metaphorical suit of armor when you're presenting your game at a convention. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, Mike is asking, do you think it's worthwhile to have a dev blog for people to look at? Um, in 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 my experience, none, none of my dev logs have reached over two hundred views or so, mm-hmm. and I made about thirty eight of them for for a, for negative world and stuff like that. But but to going back to. Uh, to like presenting and talking with people that that can actually be good practice ju- just just the just the ta- talking into the microphone and stuff like that um like i i initially started devlogs cuz i felt like it and also because as you tell from our various podcasts with each other i have a speech impediment um and and talking into the mic is kind of a form of speech therapy for me mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and that's how I really got started with doing these with the presentations. Was doing the videos here on YouTube, and just learning, well, you know, how to look on a camera, how to, as you said, with facial expressions and stuff like that. 
well, and and also, mm-hmm. yes, y- yeah, y- yeah, yes, Mike. I have a, I have the uh, dev logs on on YouTube. Um, uh, the well, I will grab the um, uh, playlist link for you if you're interested. Right. Um, but uh, but uh, go 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 going back to taking criticism yeah that that is definitely definitely important because you know as we as we've seen for the last few years with uh mm-hmm. with 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 a lot of the uh indie devs that jumped on the uh steam green line steam direct bandwagon myself included that's how negative rolls there i had to use steam direct mm-hmm. um uh, the, you know a lot of, a lot of them just can't take criticism and go to extreme lengths to, to, to try to uh, tr- tr- try to prove their weak points. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a very major point I want to elaborate on for people watching. That as we were talking about on our live show, there are developers out there who feel that you should only give criticism that is you know on the nice side. You should only accept criticism if it's coming from someone you know. I guess hailing you with uh, soft gloves, in a matter of speaking. But you really can't expect consumers to do that. And as you just said, Michael, there have been many examples of developers who tend to get very reactive when it comes to bad criticism, or harsh criticism, I should say. Yeah, I I just linked to the uh, playlist. Yeah. And I uh, put that up there. And if you want to send that to me in a message, or I'll try and grab it later, um, I'll clue that in the description when this goes up in recorded form. Sure, I will link it to you right now. All right. Yeah, I don't know where Shark is. Maybe he's working on his own game at the moment. But, yeah, it's very important, again, and I think there's a very important distinction when it comes to, again, exhibiting a full game versus one that's not out yet in terms of handling criticism. And there's several different uh, aspects of this. I think the first one is just in terms of criticism itself. Like, if you're working on a prototype or an alpha or a beta build, you can always, uh, I guess, rationalize it by saying the game's not done, you know, I haven't put everything in there. But if you're exhibiting, like, your full game and somebody comes up to you and says, this game sucks, why are you making this? You know, you gotta be prepared for that kind of feedback. Well, th- thankfully, I haven't had to deal with that, and mm-hmm. even then, I haven't seen anybody go, you know, that hyperbolic. Mm-hmm. But, but, uh, but, of course, that's just an extreme example. Yeah. And um, I guess for you, Michael, like any, I guess, tips in terms of, I guess, either you know, presenting yourself or. Uh, training in terms of like giving out your speeches in terms of being able to I guess handle criticism because again this sounds like it's a very simple thing you know don't scream at somebody but unfortunately it's one of the things that it tends to come back to bite a lot of developers I I mean I mean like it's easy to say it's simple and Mm -hmm. in some ways it is but yeah you know, if, if if you just spent the majority of your life being an introverted kid and trying to learn this as an adult, well, or trying to build up build it up as an adult, it's mm-hmm. it's a work in progress. Like, like you know, it, you know, it does make you want to lash out sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, it just it it's honestly just it's honestly a work in progress. Mm-hmm. Now. I guess here's another thing. Regarding taking feedback, the other aspect is taking something and then adding it to your game. And again, this is a topic we could easily... That's another hour and a half to two hour podcast about you know what to add based on feedback. But when you were exhibiting Negative World at PAX, did anyone give you feedback in terms of, I would like to see X in this game? Um... Some some of it, like, like the honestly, the most extreme thing I heard is that is just increase the pushing block speed. Mm-hmm. That's it. Oh. <laughs> um, like I have, uh, it's yeah, you know, I'd probably be getting a lot of those um uh, the when when I was uh 
when it was earlier in in production like i've had i've been asked how about a power up that gives you more jumps and stuff like that mm -hmm. so when it comes to that feedback especially at a convention when you're actually meeting people you know somebody who doesn't know you from any other developer i guess how much i guess do you take stock in that in those comments like again if you're showing your game to somebody who has no interest in it or has no you know personal or familiar ties like do you take that information or take that feedback as you know gold or how do you i guess balance that in terms of what you want out of that game um, it, it it honestly depends. Like like if they if it's something like cough causing motion sickness or may making the game you know, you know unpleasant to play, then yeah, I would take it as gold. But as but as a suggestion or oh hey you should add this or whatever, like I never take those as gold. I do consider every single one, either from my view or from their views. But but it's it's usually on it's usually on a case by case basis. Okay. Now, oh, go ahead. And all and and also project scope. That's a big one too. Oh yeah, definitely. Now, when I spoke to a previous guest, uh, John Brieger, who does a lot in terms of play testing and user feedback, either with his games or with other people's games, we talked about kind of, I guess, preparing for that feedback. Now. He was talking more on the lengths of, you know, you're going to, like, a local game club or you're actually a contact and you'll do playtesting. But when you're at a convention, um, I'm not, I don't think this would directly apply to you, but for like, anyone else, like, like other booths you were looking at, did they have anything set up for recording feedback? Whether it was just recording somebody's play session or even just having a simple audio recorder when you were talking to somebody. You're you're asking if any devs do that? Yeah, or like like setting up to actually record somebody playing your game. Though I have, I've personally I've never seen that happen. I'm sure it happens happens somewhere, but mm -hmm. but no, no, okay. be be because because one that that's some extra setup, and and another part is that. If, videos take up a lot of space oh yes yes they do for anyone who doesn't do like youtube or video recording yes they take up a lot in terms of your hard drive yeah uh, the which which really sucks if you're someone like me who likes to archive everything mm -hmm. yeah i got an external uh, hard disk drive just for uh, the podcast that i do I have three external hard drives to keep to keep up uh, gameplay footage. Mm -hmm. So, um, getting back to uh, getting feedback and showing your game to people, I guess, and this kind of goes back again with interacting with the uh, guests or with the various uh, convention goers. Do you like? hover around them? Do you just kind of like let them be and go off and do something else while they're playing your game? Um... It... it Again, it depends. Like, like if I see a group or one person love, look over the game for over five seconds, that's when I jump in and do the salesman spiel mm -hmm. and, and and stuff like that. Uh, the, uh, uh, otherwise, if, they, if it's not... It, if they don't stand there for five seconds, then you just move on. It's just, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, if they're already asking me questions, I already got them in. And, and you know, if they're playing, that's already done. Mm -hmm. All right. And now, here's a really good point or, or a good follow-up to that point. And hold on, my phone is ringing. Let me just close my door there. But a very good point about that. Are you, like... What are your thoughts on kind of being like the backseat player when it comes to people playing a game? As in, like when they're actually playing your game, they're trying to do something. Are you kind of like being over their shoulder and saying, "Oh, you should do this," or you know, "Go over here," or do you generally just let them, you know, do it all on the, their own? I generally let them do do it on their own. I've designed the first world for that purpose because. 
you know, I've said before, Nintendo Worlds, from a design perspective, is designed after, you know, Atari games that didn't have, you know, on-screen text or stopping gameplay mid, stopping mid gameplay to tell you something. Um, and I wanted that to be, uh, to be like that. And whenever they did ask a question, I. I just provide a hint and let them f figure it out for for themselves because it's much more satisfying to them and for me if for for for, for them to uh, to uh, to uh, to uh, figure it out them uh, the, themselves and that you know encourages them to keep going. Mm -hmm. And again, you don't want to be that person who's just like constantly interrupting your own game to tell them something. You're playing the game the wrong way. Yeah. You're playing it wrong. I'm the master of the universe. Yeah. Uh, pro tip: Don't do that at a convention for any developers watching us right well, now. Well, well, the, you, 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 I, I remember the developer of Hydrophobia a decade ago was mm -hmm. was this said that. Mm -hmm. I remember a yacht club. They were telling us about a friend of theirs who was like saying that when they were exhibiting their game at a presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to do that. Again, you don't want people to leave your booth annoyed or unhappy with you. Now, uh, one quick uh, question there, or one quick tangent. Getting back to setting up, or this is something I should have asked when we were talking about preparing the booth and such. Do you, or are you allowed to bring copies of your game to sell when you're exhibiting at a convention? I actually don't know that. I mean, like, the most I did was just bring in download codes for prizes, but that's about it. Okay. I was just thinking, like, I'm assuming that, again, when you're at a convention, they have exhibitor booths where you can buy stuff and things along those lines. I just wasn't sure if you're allowed to actually literally sell your game there. Well, I mean, I mean, well... Side tangent. Um, when you're showing a game at a booth, they always assume that it's in early access or not released yet, and people are generally surprised when I told them that it's been released on Steam for four months now. But but I mean, if it's already on Steam, they most of the time they'll wish list it on the spot. Um, I've had some on live buying, but but that's the exception. But that's beside the point. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and again, it's very important to again make that distinction between exhibiting a game because, as you just said, Michael, that for a lot of these conventions, that they are usually aimed at marketing something that isn't out yet. Again, you're going to see the newest or something that isn't really available to the outside world yet. And oh yeah, I I I was eyeballing that Devil May Cry Five demo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I uh, can't wait to try that one out myself there. But um, you do have to make that distinction. As we said, that even like as a developer, you have to get into it in terms of, am I going to be showing off something that's already out? Or am I going to be showing something that is still in development? And I'm going to be accepting feedback or looking for uh, criticism along those lines. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to think if there is um, anything else regarding this topic. I guess uh, for people watching, I guess this will be officially last call for questions then. Uh, for you, Michael, any other aspects that we didn't touch on that you'd like to bring up? Um, bring shoes with comfy soles. <laughs> I, I did not think, think of that, and I regret it. <laughs> um... Uh, the, 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 there there there's definitely a lot more to this topic mm -hmm. uh, but i but i guess i guess on the top of my head i think we covered all the big points mm -hmm. i guess here's one i think this should be very important to mention then in t once the convention is wrapped up or actually i i should have another quick tangent again there's the word of the day for you mojo when obviously for people who don't go to conventions, when there are like four or five days long, there is a point where the convention you know shuts down for that day. I think like uh, G said, I think it was like around nine or ten o'clock that the actual convention hall itself closes. As an exhibitor, like, do you do anything in terms of I guess locking down your booth before you leave for the night? 
Um, in Pax Rising's case, uh, the, we, we had storage and keys and stuff like that. Um, but but uh, for for the most part, uh, the, I would just unhook my laptop, take my laptop with me, and uh, just ha head out. Every, everything else was still where, where it was when I got back each day. Okay. You think you're in the books? No, I don't. <laughs> So, when the convention does come to an end, I guess a, another point about that, when, like, at what point do you, I guess, officially close down your booth? Do you do it, like, starting on the last day? Do you wait until the actual convention is over? Like, how do you go about doing that? Um, in Patch's case, when, when the exhibit hall closes on Sunday night, that is it. You pack up as fast as you can. You're out of there, basically. Oh yeah, but the, the, even the big companies like like it's it's just dismantling everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's again another very interesting point I just want to touch on. When we're talking about multi-day conventions, like obviously you have to be on. You know, for every day that you're there, you have to be ready, raring to go. But do you notice like anything different in terms of I guess the consumer level? You know, from day one to the final day. Well, 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 well. Uh, firstly, the the uh, uh, attendees get to sit down. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, yeah 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 you know they're they're walking about they're having fun and 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 just and just be yeah, and just you know just. Uh, getting away from work or school playing hooky whatever <laughs> <laughs> but I guess like on like the final day are there still like high levels of people or high levels of interest or does it tend to I guess slowly die down over the um, course of the days well in Pax's case uh, for Friday is a moderately busy day because you know some people are still at work or school or whatever um, Saturday is by far the biggest the the biggest and busiest day of the weekend because it's Saturday and and sun and Sunday it's 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 a little bit below Friday because like it's still a, it's still a shitload of people um, right. but 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 you know that's also the time where people are probably packing up if they if they live in another state or a country or whatever, or or just need to be home at a, at a certain point. Mm -hmm. And I actually just thought of a few other quick questions, which is probably good for the audience. They get a little bit more. But there's one thing we didn't touch on that I want to bring up, and that is dealing with the other exhibitors. Now, obviously, when you're a consumer, or you're just going to the show you know, whatever, you're free to walk around, you can do whatever the heck you want. But when you're also presenting, I guess, are there any interesting aspects with regards to, I guess, talking to other exhibitors there, or showing your game off to them, or they're showing their game off to you? Um... Yeah, yeah, there, 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 there's interesting points and out, outcomes, like... And, and you know it's an opportunity to learn from other like uh in the Pax Rising boot there 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 was a game called the Rabbit and the Owl that was the show stealer of the Pax Rising booth and 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 their booth was decked out and they and also and also and it also didn't hurt that their game was co-op puzzle focused and we both used them um, in, ne in negative space so there's that but uh and some and you know. And it also depends on the exhibitor you're talking to, because they could be even more awkward than you. Mm -hmm. Like, like, uh, well, I did not know I was sharing a booth with, uh, with, with the creator of Super Hexagon. Oh. And, and, uh, and, I don't know, to, 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 to this day, I just kind of think I, God, I presented myself as just a, just like a stuttering goober. <laughs> But, uh, yeah. <laughs> and I guess as a, another uh, interesting point there, you use a wire controller. Do you use a wire controller when you show your game off? Yes, 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 yes. Be, 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 because, because, because if you use a... Uh, because, because, if, because if you use a wireless controller, 
it, it's much it's much easier for people to steal it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And 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 Mojo, um, a a goober, um, that that it it's 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 just kind of a a term for awkward person. I I think it came from I think it came came, came from the 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 uh, the first SpongeBob movie back in two thousand four ish, and the, the and 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 it kind of and the word kind of evolved a bit. It, it, it it's just it it's just kind of a word I use. <laughs> And uh, Mojo is uh, not in the United States, so he probably doesn't know that slang, too. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And I guess this is a stupid question, but I'm sure somebody's thinking about this. When you're exhibiting at a show, are you able to have time to actually go around and look at other booths, or are you just basically locked to your booth for however long the show may be? Uh, well, if you were by yourself like me, then yeah, you're locked to your booth. Um, that, 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 that's why the best time to check out other exhibitors is, is the day before the convention or a few hours be, 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 be before the expo hall opens. Mm-hmm. And, uh, speaking of that, like, for each day with the convention, like, how early do you arrive at the actual conference hall? Generally, I arrive an hour before uh, press hours because what PAX does is that press and streamers get in an hour before the general public, mm-hmm. and so I get in an hour before that. So the be be because because so some of the more high profile exhibitors will let other exhibitors play play like. The, the the hotness coming out in the next few months uh, early but like that, that that's how I was able to play the uh, the uh, Devil May Cry 5 demo <laughs> all right I'm trying to think if there's anything else really fast we talk about cards we talk about feedback convention um yeah I uh, might arrive late but you do give out business cards and you did have the flyers although they didn't really do much for you yeah, man. Even even if you make your flyers small, they don't work. Like the flyers I used were like, were like postcard size. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they they just don't work. <laughs> All right. I think I am just about out of questions. I guess anything coming to your mind last minute, Michael? Um. No, not not, not at this moment. And any and and. Anyone in the chat ha- have any questions or anything? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And again, like it's always very challenging. <laughs> oh, there's a question for you. <laughs> um, if, if yeah, yes, I do actually have long hair in real life. I don't have the webcam going on because one is not plugged, and other I live I I live in a dark dank room well a dark dank cubicle that is my room and and I look I look less less like Jay from Mallrats and 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 more and and more and more like a fatter Billy Mitchell <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see anything else really fast um yeah so I guess like uh getting more I guess back to like like the high level of going to these conventions. I guess here's a very good question to actually end the cast on. Do you think it is worth it for developers to go to conventions with their games? Oh yeah, that that's one thing I wanted to mention. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let let me tackle this elephant in the room right now. Mm-hmm. If 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 you plan on sh- plan plan on showing your game in game at conventions to uh, to see uh, a a a a big sales boost immediately, you're gonna be disappointed. Mm-hmm. Uh, indie developers make most of their money through through store wide discounts and stuff like that. Uh, the 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 uh, reason. For, for for a developer to go go to conventions and stuff like that is to build up investment, not the financial kind of investment, but more but networking investment. And conventions so the okay, conventions house some some of the best of the industry, and and uh, and and it's best 
and I made I made a couple of of uh, the uh, partners and connections at uh, Pack South that will hopefully be paying off soon. So if so, yeah, and. And and that's why I'll be at uh, GDC and PAX East and and, and stuff like that. Uh, the so long and short of it, it, it's not so much financial investment as it is you know, bu- building building up your community or 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 business network. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, one the one question at a time. Mm-hmm. All right, all right, new new shark. I don't know if this was covered yet, but. Mm-hmm. Um, New Shark in Pat in, in Pack South's case, I already lived in in Texas, so so it wasn't that, so it wasn't too bad. But but it's it, it still was over a grand with considering booth, meals, motel, and all that. But and I all I can say to that is just you know save up. Mm-hmm. That that's all I could say, and just and just budget accordingly. Yeah. And and Mike, I did do the majority of the art for for Naked World. I had some help with the environment art, specifically worlds one and two, but all the animations are mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. I think that's all the questions. <laughs> and uh, one thing, because news got here late. That when you are exhibiting, I just want to bring up the fact that you do also have to pay for the booth itself. And you mentioned like a s- small ten by ten was at least a grand in of itself. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me see. Anything else? Uh, we talk about the games being what kind of games are good. We talk about getting the demo. Um. Hmm. Uh, all right. Um, side side thing. Uh, the the twin stick shooter is not selling well. I think I think Titan Souls did fairly well. Uh, 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 unless I'm thinking the wrong game. I don't know how well that game did. I know that next Mikamiya didn't do so well. Machinia Mikamiya. I always forget how to pronounce that. Uh, Mojo, I try to keep things short, but 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 I'm I'm just very detail oriented. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let me see. Hmm. Uh, I guess uh, one other quick question or one other quick topic about. Oh, actually, that's a really good one. Before I get to mine, uh, Mike's asking: Is there music or noise level restrictions for your booth? In my experience, no, but I could definitely see it being a problem yeah. if you if, if you get like like super decked out speakers and mm-hmm. it just drowns out conversation. Mm-hmm. But 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 within reason, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can just imagine like a giant like bass uh, vibrating like the whole convention there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the t- the question I wanted to bring up very quickly, again, for people t- uh, tuning in later for the cast, I want to go back very fast about getting something presentable to the to an audience or to the convention itself. I guess uh, when you were uh, getting your, your build ready for uh, PAX, how long did it take you to prepare that? Like, like, just get getting the demo ready. Yeah. Well, again, it was, when it was already released, it wasn't that bad. But mm-hmm. roughly a week of on and off work because you know contract work and second project and mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I was just uh, thinking about that. Like for people watching this who are preparing like a work in progress or something that's still in alpha or beta, that you do have to prepare, obviously, in advance and make sure that your demo is, you know, as most presentable to people coming in to see it. Yeah. All right. But I think with that, yeah, we're just about an hour and a half in terms of time. I think we'll wrap it up for tonight. And again, uh, Michael, as always, if you're free in the future, we can always have you back on and discuss some other topics. Yeah, um, uh, I, I, I think I think when you told me there, it's usually a 
a three month wait time so that you know I'm not too saturated. So 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 if I think of another good topic in Mayish or so. Yeah. yeah, usually two to three months I think is good, something along those lines. Yeah. All right. But I think with that, we will say goodnight for this cast. So, uh, everybody watching this live record, thank you so much for tuning out or for tuning in. Uh, for you, Michael, with regards to social media, any place you'd like to plug right now? Um, sure. Um, I I have two Twitter accounts one 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 for the company one for the uh, personal account the company account is at Big Niche Games and my and my personal Twitter is at Game Dev underscore Michael um, another one is is my uh, YouTube channel with a lowly fifty four subscribers <laughs> I've I I I try to bring out bring I try to bring a, vi a video mo monthly and dev and I'm trying to get devlogs uh, the, for, for for the second project coming up soon um and I also have my own div discord server which sh should I provide you the link for that um if you want to put that in the chat I think that would be good and if you want to send it to me also separately I'll include that in the description too all right um, I th I think that's about it, uh, about the places I want to plug because because you know fa fa Facebook's just you know not great. Yeah, I'm thinking about getting off of Facebook myself. Uh. All right. While you're typing that in, I'll go through my thing. So if you are new and watching this and would like to get this talk ad free and early, be sure to check out Patreon.com/slashGWBicer. Right now, we're in promotion. Anyone who donates at least $25 or more will get an acknowledgement in my second book of game on game design. And be sure to check out our Discord channel. That will be linked down below if you want to have game design discussions and all matter of design topics. But my voice is actually starting to go out as well. So other than that, be sure to come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where exam the art and science of games. And if you are a developer wanting to come on and talk, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Other than that, have a great night, folks, and I'll see you later for our next stream. Until then, take care. <laughs>